This video is sponsored by Kimura. Do you like to run around naked? Me neither, I prefer wearing clothes whenever I can help it. But who says you have to look like a tarnished peasant mucking about in the slop just for the sake of being not naked? Why not wear something that fits nicely while looking absolutely divine? That's where Kimura comes in. They use only premium materials like the absolute finest cotton for their clothes, be it a t-shirt, jacket, hoodie, you name it. And they care so much about their products that they even hand package each one of them before sending them off to soon to be transformed lowly tarnished peasants. And I would know since I've received several shirts from them. And speaking from first-hand experience, they are indeed quite soft and comfortable with fitting nicely around the chest and shoulders area and tapering off at the midsection, which is a very popular cut for many people. I'd do a little catwalk strut for you, but I don't want to get the video demonetized. And also they have better looking models than me on their website. But that's besides the point. The point is letting Kimura clothe you with their premium products at much better prices than other premium clothing companies. And what's more is that if you go to Kimura.com and use the code BANDIT at checkout, you will save 10% off your entire order, which will then arrive to you with speedy shipping and a full 100% refund satisfaction guarantee. Not that you'll need it. So what are you waiting for? Ah, oh, rise now. Ye tarnished, and let Kimura clothe your naked writhing bodies. And now, on to the video. Hey everyone, Bandit here. Elden Ring is a weird game. In the lands between, we see all sorts of stuff, like trees with dead people making up their roots, demigods that ride tiny malnourished horses, a turtle pope that I would gladly give my life for, frog people that cartwheel aggressively towards you, and so much more. Amidst all of this weirdness though, fans were very quick to point out that there seems to be somewhat of a pattern to it, one that feels a bit familiar. The weird world of Elden Ring has so many callbacks and shoutouts and parallelisms to its equally weird spiritual predecessor series called Dark Souls. And I already know what a lot of you are thinking. Lots of fans out there, and I mean lots of fans out there, are very adamant to say the least regarding the notion that Elden Ring is definitively 100% without a doubt a different universe than Dark Souls altogether based off of a quote from Miyazaki, and that's fine. Elden Ring is still different enough that I totally understand why you'd like to believe it's a different universe entirely so that you don't get a headache trying to figure out how it could be connected. Totally fair. It does say in the very beginning of the reveal trailer that Elden Ring takes place in a quote, new world created by Miyazaki and R.R. Martin, and Miyazaki himself has never said that they are connected universes. But I just so happen to think that it's also important to note that he has not confirmed their separate either. So in this video, I'd like to remain a bit more topical than usual and state my train of thought and reasoning for why I think Elden Ring and Dark Souls have to share a universe, from both in-game lore discoveries and real life discoveries. And if you've ever found yourself even the least bit curious about why these games feel a little too familiar to one another, you'll probably enjoy what I have to say. Oh, and uh, spoiler alert, for the video, you've been warned. Even before any interviews or theories started to take place, fans like myself had already felt that there was a connection between the franchises. And honestly, once the game actually released, these feelings were nothing but strengthened. Like I was mentioning earlier, the worlds of these games are extremely similar, but just in case some people aren't on the same page here, let's cover a few of the aforementioned similarities. In Dark Souls, you've got women trying to become fire keepers, and in Elden Ring you've got women trying to become finger maidens, and their purposes are very similar. The land of Lothric from Dark Souls 3 is described as being the land where the lords converge, and the lands between from Elden Ring is described as being a land between. The hollows of Dark Souls are cursed humans, and the tarnished of Elden Ring are also cursed humans. Gwyn committed the first sin in Dark Souls by creating the Dark Sigil, and Merica committed the first sin in Elden Ring by shattering the Elden Ring, and the list of similarities goes on and on on and on. Of course, they're not perfectly similar to one another, like for instance, there's no grace in Dark Souls and there are no bonfires in Elden Ring, but the fact remains that they're definitely more similar than not. But see, because of that, if we are still to say that this is truly a wholly separate universe devoid of any lore connecting the two, then for them to share all of these similar concepts and themes is kind of lazy world building, isn't it? I mean, that would be like some creative genius, let's just say Michael Jackson, making the hit song Billie Jean saying the kid is not my son, and then some years later making Billy Dean saying the girl is not my daughter and claiming that it's a brand new concept that's never been seen before in his previous works. 
Everyone would know that even though it's a new song, it's not actually a new concept. It would clearly have to have been inspired greatly by what came before. And I think this is true for Elden Ring. I think it is extremely inspired by the universe of Dark Souls, but I also don't think Miyazaki and Frunsoft are lazy developers that copy and paste world structure and concepts from game to game and just rename the concepts and then call it a different IP altogether. And because of one specific quote from a very influential creator of Elden Ring, I also take it one step further and believe it is legitimately connected in the lore. Some of you already know who I'm about to quote. It would be the legendary writer George R.R. Martin himself. But I don't think the quote actually came from him originally. Uh, let me explain. As everyone already knows, Martin was recruited as one of the two head writers for the universe of Elden Ring. Specifically, he handled the mythos of the world, or the setting and universe building, while Miyazaki and the rest of the team from FromSoft handled the actual nitty gritty story. And in an interview with Martin about Elden Ring, he said this. But uh, the, the game is called The Elden Ring, and it's a, a sequel to a, a video game that came out a few years ago called Dark Souls. <laughs> All right, that's all I've got for this one. Pack it up, folks. We're done here is what I would say if I didn't know for a fact that there are some of you who are automatically going to go down in the comment section below just to claim that George R.R. R. Martin didn't actually know what he was talking about or that he just meant it wasn't an actual sequel, but like a kind of sequel, a spiritual sequel, a sequel in a sense. But I'm sorry, I just have to disagree because of several reasons. The first of which being that the man, the myth, the legend, G.R.R.M. doesn't actually play video games personally. That's, I, I don't play many video games. Literally a few seconds earlier in the interview, he said this. Well, it, it actually is considerably different. I've, I've played some video games. I'm not a big video gamer. I don't play many video games. I'm not a big video gamer. Now, I'm not trying to be stereotypical, but what I think a man in their 70s means by saying, oh, I've played some video games before, is that they mean they've played, like, Galaga, or maybe even the original Legend of Zelda. My own analytics on this very channel tells me that people in his age group are almost completely uninterested in these kinds of games. And wait, this is weird. It also tells me that 90% of my recurring viewers are not subscribed to my channel. Wow, really? 9 out of 10 people? I hope those people know that a subscribe helps the channel out so much on the algorithm and that they can always unsubscribe later if they change their mind and that I am and would be eternally grateful if they did choose to subscribe. Please subscribe, I need friends. I think it's extremely safe to say that Mr. Martin has not played any of the Soulsborne games, namely any from the Dark Souls franchise, which has only existed for about a decade. If he had played the FromSoft games before, he would have mentioned that he was a fan of those games or maybe even the company. But instead, he says he's largely unfamiliar with video games as a whole and then explicitly states that Elden Ring is a sequel to Dark Souls. Let me ask you this. How would a man that is not familiar with a video game franchise or games in general know that he's working on the sequel to a video game. I mean, I guarantee you that he didn't just pull that out of his ass and say, eh, even though they said over and over that they just want me to create a new world, I feel like it's probably, you know, a sequel to this other game that they made called Dark Souls. Not that they brought it up at all, this is just me pulling it out of my ass. There's only one actual logical answer as to why he said that. He must have been told that it was a sequel when he was asked by Miyazaki to write for the game. Or in other words, the fact that it is a sequel came from the word of Miyazaki himself. With this in mind, all of a sudden, even though there was a new world built for Elden Ring, all of those parallels between it and Dark Souls start to make sense. And that's just the conceptual parallels. There are several things that Elden Ring has in common with Dark Souls that implies a specific shared lore base. For instance, in the original Dark Souls, if you descend down this giant hollow tree called the Great Hollow, you will find yourself in Ash Lake, where there are countless other giant trees called arch trees, mysteriously and specifically spaced out from one another in a lake of water, extending for an unknown length into the distance and sky above. Many fans over the years have come to the conclusion that these arch trees are inspired by real-life Norse mythology, where the giant, all-encompassing world tree known as Yggdrasil supports the entire world on its branches. Their actual purpose isn't confirmed, of course, as is common with lore in these games, but that's actually besides the point. The point is, whatever these trees are, they make a straight-up reappearance in Elden Ring. It's debatable whether they appear under the ground in the Eternal Cities, as these structures look to be pillars made of rock instead of wood, but the undebatable, blatantly obvious appearance of the arch trees comes at the final boss. As the Elden Beast materializes in front of us, we 
can see in the background all sorts of equally spaced trees extending from a lake of water limitlessly into the distance and sky. It's quite clearly supposed to be some sort of big reveal at the climax of the game, and I can't help but feel that whatever they are, they connect to the arch trees and therefore the universe of Dark Souls. And speaking of trees, you know how it's super weird that whenever you see roots of the great tree in the dungeons of Elden Ring, it's always shown to be like made of dead bodies? And also how when you die, you sprout little saplings of another Erd tree, implying that in this universe, trees come from death? Well, this whole bodies equal sprouting trees thing actually started in Dark Souls. There are bodies of hollows that are shown to have sprouted into trees, once again implying that the rules of the world function the same. Human life is reborn into trees. But okay, enough about trees. In Dark Souls, there are also three kinds of magics, sorceries, miracles, and pyromancies. In Elden Ring, there are two, sorceries and incantations, which are literally the combination of miracles and pyromancies from Dark Souls, which let's face it, was probably simplified for gameplay reasons. The fact that sorcery is specifically an intelligent scaling shared school of magic between the games, and incantations that scale with faith are the combined miracles and pyromancies from Dark Souls, also implies very heavily that the game universes are the same. After all, none of the other FromSoft games share these schools of magic except for the miracles and demon souls, but we'll get to that possible connection later. The enemies that are also shared between the worlds make sense too. And this is possibly one of the biggest reasons to believe that Elden Ring is connected to Dark Souls. The literal, nearly picture-perfect reappearance of rats, or large rats, or slimes, or man-serpents, or undead dogs, or crabs or giant crabs or sentinels is more than just a coincidence. And then there's the appearance of perhaps the most notable and infamous Dark Souls monsters of them all, the basilisks. You know, those bug-eyed lizard body death farters that ambush you in all the wrong places. They're even still straight up called basilisks and still curse you with death if your blight bar fills up, exactly like their Dark Souls appearances. Both of the universes also share the ancient dragon lore, where in Dark Souls, the dragons once ruled the world with impenetrable stone scales that Gwyn figured out how to defeat, and in Elden Ring, long before the age of the Erd Tree, dragons ruled the world and used to have, you guessed it, stone scales. Like I said earlier, I refuse to believe that FromSoft is just a lazy company. They are more than capable of creating brand new enemies for each of their brand new IPs like they've done time and time again. You are kidding yourself if you think they just copy-pasted all of these monsters and their lore from Dark Souls because they ran out of time or some other lazy reason, which means that the monsters reappeared for a reason. Besides the monsters, there are also some specific names and even possibly people that show up in Elden Ring from Dark Souls. For instance, in the southern Weeping Peninsula, there's a castle called Castle Morn, uniquely spelt M-O-R-N-E, within which there is a lady named Irina who's trying to become a finger maiden. This is quite peculiar because in Dark Souls 3, there's a man known as Aegon of Karim or Igon of Karim, however you say it, who wears Morn's armor, also spelt uniquely M-O-R-N-E, and is protecting a lady named named Irina, who's trying to become a firekeeper. Coincidence? I think not. And some of you have heard about the speculation surrounding the Dung Eater because of that emblem on his chest. The blank-faced sun emblem on the chest of the Dung Eater is stupidly similar to the blank-faced sun emblem on the chest of Solera of Astora. I'm not saying that this means definitively that they're the same person or related to one another, but you've gotta admit, this is just blatant. I mean, it would be like another Zelda game coming out being called something else, but then featuring the freaking Hylian Royal Crest on someone's shield or body armor. Certain things are just too blatant. And even if they're not related to one another, they clearly share a belief in the sun since it is said that the Dung Eater once drew guidance from that very emblem. Oh, and I had mentioned earlier that I would talk about the possible connection to Demon Souls, and it's not very substantial, but it is extremely cool, even if nothing more than a nod or a reference. The Demon Souls theme is literally in the Elden Ring theme. No joke, take a listen. Freaking cool, right? And of course, the final connection that I'll mention is patches. Good old trustworthy patches. But at the end of all these discoveries and similarities, the biggest question of them all remains, and that is how. We can sit here and call out every single thing that Dark Souls shares with Elden Ring, and trust me, it's a lot, but it feels like it's all for nothing if we can't explain how they're connected. And this is where things get extremely speculative. Perhaps Dark Souls took place before Elden Ring as a result of one of Dark Souls 3's endings. Perhaps it took place after as a result of one of Elden Ring's endings, probably the fire one. Perhaps Elden 
Ring's multiple different endings lead to the multiple different IPs. But on the other hand, maybe we don't actually have to figure this out. See, lots of people, myself included, tend to get all caught up with trying to answer the question of whether or not Dark Souls takes place before or after Elden Ring, as if it's all on one big timeline. But one thing that's clear from the structure of all these games is the fact that there have always been lands outside whatever land the game takes place in. In Dark Souls, there are the distant lands of Astora, or Karim, or Katarina. In Elden Ring, there are the distant lands of the Newman or the Reeds. In Demon's Souls, the whole game is composed of five different worlds. The point is, it's always been a blatant fact that other lands or worlds exist within the same universe. And who's to say how far away these other worlds are? I mean, Kratos from God of War can eliminate the entire Greek pantheon and then just travel far enough to enter the world of Norse mythology, complete with its own set of rules and gods. So why can't something similar be possible for the universe of Elden Dark Demon's Souls Ring? This means that it doesn't matter which game took place when because they don't necessarily have to happen in the same lands or worlds, and therefore are not necessarily directly connected to one another, while also explaining how they are all indirectly connected to one another, if that makes sense. So TLDW, the worlds of Dark Souls and Elden Ring have way too much specific stuff in common to be a coincidence, George R.R. R. Martin confirms Elden Ring is a sequel to Dark Souls, and it's entirely possible that the games are all connected by universe but take place in different worlds. That's just my theory though, what do you guys think? Is Elden Ring connected to Dark Souls, or is this just another case of wild fan speculation over a bunch of weightless references? Let me know in the comments below. And seriously, thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like on the video if you enjoyed it, or if you enjoyed my efforts into making it, and subscribe if you haven't already for so much more to come. Huge thanks as always to my bandit crew, of which I have the new name of Astrolink83 to announce. That's all I've got for this one, so as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Bandit, looking forward to seeing you next time, and signing out. Peace!